So as we saw from the last lecture, the big picture consists of power flow analysis when combined with economic dispatch gives us the optimal power flow. When OPF is combined with a sense of security, it gives us the security constraint optimal power flow. Part one of this lecture reviews the basics of power flow analysis, what is economic dispatch, and what is the concept of locational marginal pricing or LMP. So we first start with the basics of power flow analysis. This picture shows a sample bus in the power, in the power system where PK and QK, these variables represent load or generation injection in this bus. And PKI, QKI, or similarly PKJ and QKJ represents the active and the reactive power flow on the transmission lines associated with bus K. G and B are the transmission line parameters and V and theta are the voltage, bus voltage and bus angle respectively. So to obtain a power flow of a system, two of these four variables should be specified at each bus. So these variables can be P and Q for the load bus, P and V for the generator bus, and V and theta for the reference bus. So what does the power flow actually signify? The power flow study, we also call it as a load flow analysis, is nothing but a steady state analysis whose main objective is to figure out the voltages, currents, real power flows, and reactive power flows, or active and reactive power flows in a system under any given load conditions. To obtain the power flow analysis, as you have discussed, we are given the injections and the generator voltages. Our main motive is to find out the bus voltage and angles, as well as the flow in each branch. So to do this, we employ the power flow equations, which you have already seen in previous classes. The power flow equations at bus K, for example, the active power injection is a function of voltage at bus K and voltage at all buses which are connected to bus K using transmission lines. It is also a function of the line parameters G and B as well as the bus angle difference between K and I. So similarly, we can also use, uh, we can also formulate the reactive power injection at bus K and using these two equations, we can iteratively figure out what is the power flow in each branch. So to summarize, we are given generator injections, generator voltages and loads, and we want to figure out all bus voltage magnitude, bus voltage angles, and all branch power flows. However, there is one crucial thing that we are missing in power flow analysis. Typically, in a practical power system scenario, we have a bunch of different types of generators. They can be nuclear, they can be fossil fuel, they can be uh, hydroelectric, they can be gas turbine, which are small scale. You know, all of these have different costs of operations and maintenance, as you can see from this table. In power flow, we do not take into account this cost, which is obviously a very important factor because you do not want to spend a lot of money generating electricity. So the basic idea of economic dispatch comes from involving costs of generation. So in the next topic, we will quickly discuss the backgrounds of economic dispatch. So the main objective of economic dispatch is to minimize the operating cost. In most of these cases, we denote this cost as the cost of the fuel. So we minimize this operating cost under certain constraints. 
So some of the constraints, uh, the constraints include both inequality and equality constraints. So some of these constraints are generator limit inequality constraints, which means you cannot produce more than a specific amount of power for a given generator. Neither can you produce less than a specific uh, set point for a generator. And for the entire power system, you also have to make sure that the sum of all power generated is equal to the amount of demand or the load plus line losses. So with this two constraints and the objective function, we can actually figure out what is the most or the most economic optimal dispatch for a given system is under certain load conditions. So economic dispatch, it finds out the real power output of each generating units in an area. The main objective is to meet a given load demand and minimize the total operating costs. This includes inequality constants on generator outputs, as we have discussed, and also includes transmission line losses. So this is a summary of economic dispatch. We will look at an example of an economic dispatch solution. So this is a small two bus system with two generators A and B. And let us assume that load at bus A is 100 and load at bus B is 200 megawatts. We also, we also assume that bus A is a relatively cheap generating bus, whereas bus B is a more, has a more expensive generating unit. So in this case, the solution of economic dispatch gives us that the total production for generator A is 300 and the total production for generator B is zero megawatt. And in both the lines, we have a flow of 100 megawatts. Now this is trivial because we don't want to fire up the more expensive generator. So we are generating everything in generation generating station a what we observe from this figure is that the the flow of the lines are well below limit and that the economic dispatch solution is accepted so we'll see what happens when load increases and we still continue generating from generator a so in the next picture load at bus B increases from 100, from 200 to 400. Now the solution of economic dispatch becomes 500 megawatt at generator A and zero megawatt at generator B. Again, following the rule that A is less expensive and B is more expensive. Now in this case, we see that the line power flow are both 200 megawatts. So considering that the line limits were 150 megawatt, we see that the resulting flows exceed their limits. So in this case, the economic dispatch solution is not acceptable. This is because you can only overload lines to a certain extent. And if you keep on continuing overloading lines for a long time, they will sag and they might also cause failures. And once if a line fails, it might cascade to multiple line failures and we do not want to end up in that situation. So what are the drawbacks of economic dispatch? Economic dispatch ignores limits imposed by the devices. So economic dispatch does not take care of the thermal limits, the voltage limits and other stability limits in the system. So power flow did not take into account the cost. Economic dispatch took into account the cost, but did not take into account different system limits. 